many of us, at Christmas time, we remember and think about the people that are not here with us. A uh, number of years ago now, uh, 2011, I, I lost uh, my, my mother, and I, with great fondness, remember our last Christmas together. And when we have these memories and we bring them up, it makes Christmas sometimes difficult. But on top of that, sometimes, especially right now, I know in our home, and we've been talking about this, you know, we've got inflation. There's only so much money left over. And it's kind of like, do we, what do we do with Christmas this year? We don't maybe have as much money as we did before, but we kind of want to do some things for our kids. And we have to make some hard decisions. It's actually really not wise to rack up our credit card just so that we can have this abundantly huge Christmas if we can't afford it. So we have to make hard choices. Life is actually full of hard things. The loss of a loved one, the loss of a spouse, the reminder of this at Christmas, financial hardship that comes, and we've already sort of talked about this whole idea of family estrangement, where family and doing family at Christmas is sometimes hard, because you've got this one cousin who never seems to be quiet about the things you don't agree with. When we think of the Christmas story, many of us think about all of the joy, all the wonderful things about the birth of Jesus. But a lot of times at Christmas, we don't stop and think about this person who had a really, really hard time with the birth of Jesus. Now, you might immediately be going, well, wait a second, wait a second. Who in the world would have had a hard time with the birth of Jesus? Like Mary, like we think of Mary, like Mary had this angel come to her, and all of a sudden she's uh, going to be carrying the Son of God. We've talked about Elizabeth and Zechariah and the wonderful news about them being able to have a child being John the Baptist who would lead the way for Jesus. But there's a person in the story of Christmas that very often is overlooked because what that person, what he went through, was very hard. Turn with me over to Matthew chapter 1, verses 18-25, to 25, and we're going to look at Joseph. Now, Joseph uh, later becomes the, the husband of Mary, the earthly father of Jesus. But Matthew tells us this perspective of the Christmas story that is very, very important for us to wrap our heads around as we think and prepare for Christmas. I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. You can follow along in your Bible or a phone or tablet, whatever you have. This is what Matthew writes. He says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. 
When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. You may have not have ever thought or dwelled upon the misery of Joseph. It is very obvious in reading this little portion of the Christmas story, and it's interesting that Matthew, Luke doesn't start this way. Luke backs it up and starts, as we talked about last week, he starts with uh, John the Baptist and Elizabeth and Zechariah. But Matthew starts with Joseph. And he says, this is, this is how the birth of Jesus came about. And his emphasis is on this Joseph character who actually had a pretty hard time with this. And I want you this morning as we go through this to actually put yourself into the shoes of Joseph. If you were engaged in our world, the language that we use, if you were engaged to a woman and all of a sudden you find out she's pregnant and guess what? You know it's not you. That would be a very difficult situation to be in. You as, as a man would be very upset about this. And even as Mary, like how was Mary going to tell Joseph what was going on? Do you think that their relationship was strained? Yes, it was. And if it wasn't for the angel intervening, the story would have been way different. We've entitled this series, Hark. Hark means to listen. It means to pay attention to what is about to be said. And if Joseph wasn't paying attention and did what the angel of the Lord told him to do, the story would be way different. History would be way different. The promise that we see in this passage of Scripture is this beautiful picture. Verse 23, where it says, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel. When life is really hard, every single one of us is looking for Emmanuel. Every single one of us, no matter where we are, no matter what's going on, we need to know that God is with us. We actually struggle. A lot of us struggle through this process when life gets hard because we start asking the questions, well, where are you, God? What are you doing? I didn't think it was going to turn out this way, but all of a sudden, here I am in this spot. And it's hard. It's difficult. Well, God actually speaks through this whole passage about what it actually means to understand this Emmanuel. And as we go through this this morning, we may feel alone. We may be in a situation right now where we just don't feel that God is with us. We may be feeling isolated in some way from the presence of God. We may think that, oh, look at that person over there. They seem to have so much faith. How come inside of my heart, inside of my life, it's not the same? Well, the promise that we have is that God is with us. That Jesus, the Son of God, was born to a virgin and came into this world to be with us. That's what we preach. That's what we proclaim. That's what we believe. But what does it actually mean? We're going to go through three things this morning that it actually means. And what we see here, the lessons that Joseph learned. May we learn the same lessons. So here's the first one. God with us means He trusts us to work things out. 
I'm going to say that again and let it sink in because for some of us, we're looking for some big sign when there is no sign. God with us means He trusts us to work things out. Now let's look at the passage of Scripture here, the story of Joseph. We see that Joseph has been betrothed to Mary. Mary has uh, found to be pregnant with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband gets wind of this. And it says that he's a just man. Which means he has morals. He has ethics. It means that he wants justice in the situation. At the same time, he's actually unwilling to put her to shame. He does not want to embarrass Mary. And so he resolves to divorce her quietly. Now, Joseph, up until this moment where he has a dream, is placed into a very difficult position. And I want you to put yourself in that same position this morning. He is actually, and this is what betrothment meant at that time, he is placed into a legally binding agreement that they were to be married. Now, we don't actually do things that way in our Canadian context today. We do what's called an engagement, and a lot of times things uh, get broken off in an engagement, and sometimes there's not a lot of excitement around the engagement. All of the excitement is around the wedding. And even in our culture today, this whole idea of engagement and wedding is being questioned because there's so many people getting divorced. Why should we get married? Let's just live common law. But this is a big deal in the time of Mary and Joseph. So what did this legally binding agreement mean? Well, they were pledged to be married. It's a matter of allegiance between two families. It's not just Mary and Joseph. It's two families that decided that these two people are going to be married. Our families are going to be joined together. And there was dowry that was paid. There was a negotiation that took place between the families. And when there is a change of intent by one party, it is a very serious matter, matter, and it may be referred to as a breach of promise or a civil transaction that has been broken that would lead a family or group of families to court. This isn't some slight thing happening. The amount of pressure that Joseph was under, when you start to think about, oh, okay, it's not just Mary, it's the potential father-in-law, mother-in-law, all of those cousins. It's the money that has been exchanged. It's the promises that have been made. And all of a sudden, he finds himself now looking, just looking in a natural way at this circumstance that his wife has committed adultery with another man. That's hard. But Joseph doesn't bend under the pressure. Joseph acts as a just man. Now one of the things that's so important for us to realize is that justness that Joseph had come, came and comes from God. You can't be just outside of God because God is the measure or standard of what is right and holy and true. There's no justice outside of God. Now I know our world today doesn't say that. 
But that's the reality of justice. So he's a just man. He's leaning in on his heritage as an Israelite, as a Jew, and saying, i got to be just about this. But he's also willing to be compassionate. That compassion is not coming from the world. It's not coming from himself. None of us would sit there and go, oh, you know what? This person that I'm supposed to be married to is committed adultery. Oh, I'm going to be compassionate. That's not going to be natural, okay? It's not natural to do that. But here he is being compassionate because all of a sudden he's saying, you know what? I don't want to embarrass her. I care about her. I love her. And I don't want to embarrass her family. So this is what I've decided. I've decided that I'm going to divorce her quietly. All of that decision making came about in the pressure, in the difficult search situation of being in something, thrust into something that he did not ask for. But God didn't show up. He makes this decision to divorce her quietly because everything inside of him, all of his ethics, all of his morals, all of his justice, all of his understanding about God says that this is what I need to do. And what this means for us is that when things are hard and God doesn't seem to be sending you a dream or this supernatural thing happening, we actually need to understand that He's trusting us to work things out. You see, everything that Joseph needed for this moment, God had already given to him through His Word, through the understanding that they had at that moment in the time about the Messiah, about God and who God was. And he was acting according to those things. And God was trusting him to work this out. And none of us would want to be in that situation. And some of us maybe wouldn't even make the decision that Joseph made. We wouldn't make the decision to divorce that person quietly. We would want to make the decision to divorce that person and have them experience as much pain as possible because of the pain that we're in. When God says that He's with us, there are moments in our life where He is trusting us to work things out. There's a, an awesome passage of Scripture in 2 Peter 1.3, where as Peter is writing to the church, he's reminding us of this. And I want to remind you of this this morning. If you're in this difficult place and you are there and God is actually trusting you to work things out. This is what Peter says to the church. He says, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us to His own glory and excellence. God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. If you're in this difficult place and you're wondering what to do, just turn to God. It actually says through the knowledge of Him who called us. That's Jesus. God has granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Remember that when the hard times are here. Remember that when you're trying to work things out. Go to Him. Turn to Him. And you will find that God has already given you all of the things that you need to get through this hard time. Well, that's not the end of the story with Joseph. But up until this moment, Joseph has bore 
the shame, the mocking, and just think about, just think about this for a minute. The family members, they find out. Joseph, did you hear about Mary? And all of that stuff he has bore. And then, somehow, in the midst of this, he falls asleep one night. And as we read in the story, it actually says, but as he considered these things, so these things are just weighing on him. He's still considering them. He's thinking about them. And it says, Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Here's the second thing that we need to know about God with us and what it means. It actually, it means that he steps in when needed. And I want to preface this and clarify for us, it's not when you think he should step in. It's about when He decides He is going to step in. So here we have, we have Joseph. He's in this place. It's very difficult. He's made these decisions. He's been considering these things. He's been thinking on them for a while. And all of a sudden, God breaks in. Thank you, God, for breaking in. Why? Because it was needed. Because Joseph did not have all the information. Joseph did not see everything that was going on from God's perspective. He was actually just limited to see what was happening from the perspective of humanity. And God needed to break in. And so what does it say? An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. And said, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. He's basically saying, don't be afraid of this difficult situation, Joseph. It's going to be okay. I know people, eh, this is not said, but you know, I'm kind of plagiarizing the text a little bit when I say this. But as... As Joseph is hearing this, what, what he's hearing is you don't need to be afraid because of the other family. You don't need to be afraid of how hard this will be or how people will now look at you differently because this woman to everybody else is having an illegitimate son. Don't be afraid to step out. Don't be afraid to go against your own family who would say you shouldn't marry this person who's committed adultery on you. It's the first thing that Joseph needed to hear. You don't have to be afraid when life is difficult because I'm here. The angel of the Lord is there. And so... He continues and he says, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. This is a miracle, Joseph. This is not normal, Joseph. Joseph, this is a work of the Almighty God. He goes on to say, And she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. You see, all of a sudden, God breaks into Joseph's world because he really needed it. Joseph needed God to break into his world. History needed God to break into this situation. We know when we look forward in the New Testament, what we see is that there are apostles that are brothers of Jesus. Half-brothers, by the way. And all of a sudden, this connection between Mary and Joseph becomes very important in the sovereignty of God as he plays out the rest of history. It is very important for Joseph that God steps in in this moment because God is needed in that moment. And God sends an angel to send a message. You see, God with us actually means that God steps in when He's needed. Not when you think he's needed. So much of the time, when we are in difficult situations, 
We are on our timetable saying, God, you got to step in now. Oh, God, you got to step in now. Like, God, would you get this right and step in now? Yeah. And he doesn't. And that challenges our faith. But I want to say to you this morning, it's not about you and it's not about me. It's about him. God with us is about him. And he steps in when he is needed and when he says is the right time. You see, because what's at stake here is God's sovereign plan. And God steps in when his sovereignty is on the line. God steps in when his reputation is on the line. God steps in when people want to attribute things to other things rather than God. And God steps in. And for some of us, we are longing for God to step in. We live for those mountaintop experiences where God steps in and we're just like, wow, that was so amazing. God. And I'm sure that Joseph woke up that way. Well, God, why could, you could have just told me this before it all happened. But wow, this is awesome. This is incredible, God. I, 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 my wife, my person that I'm betrothed through is going to carry. She's going to be the one in the scriptures that talk about the Messiah. This is incredible. I can't believe this is happening. What an experience. Every single one of us longs for those moments. But here's the thing. Those moments are rare. They are rare. Because... God with us means that He trusts us to work things out. And He actually only steps in when He's needed. And you need to know this. You need to bank on this. You need to write this down and put this date around it. Is that God steps in when it's needed. That's who He is. And it's determined by Him, not us. And God has done this throughout history. And when we look back in the Old Testament, we look at the New Testament, we see, we see Joseph in the New Testament. We see Daniel in the lion's den stepping in. We see Noah in the flood. We see Jesus and the religious leaders, the religious leaders wanting to crucify Jesus and it's, His time has not yet come and He just walks out of their midst. God will do exactly the same thing for you because He will step in when it's needed for you. The comfort in the midst of a difficult situation knowing that God trusts you to work through this and knowing that He's going to step in from His perspective if it's needed means that we just have to lay back and trust Him. No matter what kind of difficult circumstance that you're in right in this moment, let me encourage you to just trust Him. He is with us. He trusts us. He's given us things, all things that pertain to life and godliness. And if it's really, really, really important from His perspective, He's going to step in. So trust Him. Here's the third lesson that we learn from Joseph. And that is that God with us means He empowers us to do what's right. Notice as verse 24 and 25 goes on, like Joseph just awakes from this dream. He's been sleeping. And it says, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife. Meaning, he wasn't going to divorce her. He wasn't going to be afraid of all of the things that people would say about him. 
but he still had his ethics. And it says, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son. You see, we now see Joseph do the most difficult thing in the eyes of the world. He obeys God. And he embraces his wife. Meaning that he will embrace the shame of her pregnancy. That's out of wedlock. He will be misspoken of. But he's okay with that. He will bear being jeered by family members who don't understand. They will not understand why he is doing this. Because remember, he had actually already resolved to put her away quietly. Meaning he had come to a decision after much struggle about what to do. And now he changes his mind. And what he's objecting himself to is that he will stand in the midst of mocking because there will be people when the story gets out that Mary is actually pregnant through the Holy Spirit that will laugh about that. But that's not what he does. He embraces the mockery. And he obeys what God has called him to do. So he's going to treat her honorably by not knowing her intimately until the birth of Jesus. He's going to take everything. He's not going to fear. And he's going to do what's right. This wasn't easy either. And in fact, this had this whole new list of hardships in the midst of this. Because I think for some of us, we're like, okay, then sooner or later, the difficulty will be over. Well, yes, it does, eventually. But we know from the story of Jesus that Mary and Joseph and Jesus, they actually fled from Herod down into Egypt. Like, it wasn't getting that much easier. <laughs> and in fact, all the ridicule about Jesus and His claims of being the Son of God and then His crucifixion and resurrection, like, just think about Joseph then. But God, with us, means... He empowers us to do what's right. You see, what we see happening in Joseph in this moment as he awakes from this dream, all of a sudden he's got this new resolve to obey. To do exactly what God has called him to do. Because God stepped in when it was needed. And now, he had this new sense of purpose because he was going to do what was right. And this is how God shows up being Emmanuel. He empowers us through the power of the Holy Spirit. When we confess faith in Jesus, God's promise is that He will send us a helper who is the Holy Spirit to live inside of us, to lead us and guide us into all truth. That's the empowerment of God with us so that we will do what's right. So don't necessarily go looking for some big thing. Go looking for what God has already done. He's given us His Word to guide us. He has empowered us through the Holy Spirit to live inside of us, to know faith, to understand the promises of God, to go forward in what God has commanded us to do. God is with us, even now. And sometimes we're always looking for this big angel appearance or this big thing happening in our life where we feel the tingles and we're just like, oh, I know that this is God. But God has given us so much more than those things to get through the difficult times. And I don't know about you, but when I'm in a difficult time, I don't find it really easy to get the tingles. 
In fact, it's sleeplessness. It's struggling through and second-guessing myself because we're focused on the difficulty, not on the fact that God is with us in the difficulty. Now the good news of the Christmas story, of what we learn from Joseph as this this person, this character in the life of Jesus is that when we're obeying a command from God, we're empowered by God to do what's right. And God has stepped into history as the angel said to Joseph to save the people from their sins. You know, God broke into our world, and this is what we celebrate at Christmas time that God broke into our world to save the world from sin. I would hope that for every single person that's here today, they can actually say, Yeah, that's me. God has broken into my life to save me from sin. You see, we needed to be saved. We were in a difficult position, just like Joseph was. The circumstances are different. But the difficulty is that we are on a road to punishment without Jesus stepping in. Because why? Because the world, all of us included, does not obey God. And we were on a a collision course, a crash with Him. And if it wasn't God stepping in and saying, hey, here's this Jesus who's My Son who's going to die on the cross for your sins. He's going to be with you forever. You and I are in big trouble. But thanks be to God who sent Jesus into the world to die for our sins so that when we put our personal trust and faith in Him, we receive salvation. Saved from destruction. And that is a message. That's the message of Christmas. It's the message that the world needs to hear. Maybe you need to hear it this morning. And if you've never accepted that Jesus Christ came to save you from the punishment of sin, then today should be the day you go, I need you to step into my eternal destiny. If you've already made that decision and you've embraced Jesus and you've accepted Him, be reminded of the fact that He has given you His Holy Spirit. He's given you His Word, His wisdom to guide you through all the difficult situations that are in your life. It doesn't mean they go away. It doesn't mean that they're any less painful. It does mean that He's with you through it. And that's Emmanuel. God with us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we adore You. We thank You for sending Jesus into our world. This Emmanuel, this Jesus who came to save people from sin. Lord, I pray today for all of us as we find ourselves at different times in different places in difficult situations like Joseph was. Lord, that You would just help us remember that You are with us. And God, that You have given us all things that pertain to life and godliness and You trust us to work things out in these difficult situations. And God, that You've empowered us through the power of Your Holy Spirit to live for You, to honor You, and to do the things that are right. And God, we know 
when your name is at stake, you step in. Because that's who you are. You defend your name and you make your name great. So Lord, help us to understand what it means to have you with us and help us to take our focus off of the difficulty and to see you in the midst of the difficulty. And we pray all of this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.